Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is moving to the southeast, where President Muhammadu Buhari is uh, expected to visit Imo State tomorrow and, of course, uh, commission some projects. He's uh, been uh, welcomed by the state governor. But there is a little bit of controversy with the IPOB uh, putting out statements saying that the president is not welcome and, of course, at the same time declaring once again a sit-at-home order in the southeast or in Imo State. We're joined this morning by the deputy pr president of um, Ohanez Indigo Worldwide, Dim. Uche Okuku. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. I'm very grateful and thank you. All right. So I'm going to start with asking, um, um, for, first of all, Ohanez Indibo worldwide, is it it's the same with Ohanez Indibo? Does it represent the voices of the whole of the Southeast? So is it a totally different body? Indibo worldwide is a umbrella organization of um, social cultural uh, umbrella organization of Fundibo all over the world. Okay, is it is no more the president general his tenor ended on January 9, 2021. Okay, is it is it, is this different from Ohanez Indibo, which is led by uh, uh, um, John Obiozo? By who? By Chief John Obiozo. No, he's not a chief. He's professor. Professor, Obiozo. I beg your pardon. Yes, is this is this a different body yes. from it? And I said, if if you follow up our matters. We have two fashions of the organization present today. Okay. All right. So now let's, we, we might come back to this, but let, let's now get to your views on um, the president's visit to Imo State and the IPOB saying that President Mohamed Bouhari is not welcome um, and there would be another sit at home on Thursday. Quickly share your thoughts concerning that. Well, uh, the 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 IPOP allegedly issued a statement that uh, the president is not welcome to Igbo land. The position of Ohanese is different. We have said the president is the president and commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nobody can stop you from visiting any part of Nigeria okay. under the under the constitution. He is the chief executive and chief security officer of the country. So, Mr. Okuku, what does yeah. the Ohanese Indigo plan to do beyond issuing a press statement to make the people of the Southeast, you know, actually disregard this sit at home order? What we plan to do if the president comes. What you plan to do to ensure that this sit at home order does not take place? Are you engaging with the people? What exactly, like, what actions is Ohanese taking beyond releasing a press statement? Well, the truth, we have uh, cautioned in the past IPOP and ESM to be peaceful, non violent, democratic and accommodating. We don't subscribe to violence in any form and in any way. All right, but, but you know, I think the, the question really is, you know, who, who really has the ears um, of the Southeast? Is it Ones Endigbo worldwide? Is it the um, governors of the Southeast? Is it the Ones Endigbo headed by Professor Obiozo? Or is it the IPOB? All organizations in Igbo land are under Ohanese. But there are some organizations we must admit that have uh, told a different path that the ideology, the principles, the conditions, and the ideas are not, are not being pursued by the majority of the Mr. Okuku, in the press statements that you... Can you hear me, Mr. Okuku? 
Yes. In the press statement that you released, you basically went on to say that um, the president really is an Igbo loving man. You know, he's someone who has put Igbo people in his cabinet. But if, you know, what you say is true, why do you think there's such an opposition by IPOB to the president's visit? Why are they so against the president coming to the southeast? Why do we? Why do you think the IPOB is against having the president set foot in Imo State? Why is the IPOB opposing the president coming to Imo State? Yes, please. When the IPOB had said that they are desirous to get an independent state of Biafra, that's what they said they want. With a lot of Igbos, majority of Igbos don't subscribe to Biafran ideals. They don't. Majority of Igbos believe that they are Nigerians. IPOB is in the minority in Igbo land. So how can we explain a minority being able to have such control over a whole people in the southeast? Where the issue okay. goes Mondays and then people obey. And people who don't get punished, their goods get destroyed. So how do we explain that? And who really holds the power yeah. in Imo State and the Southeast? Well, okay, okay. You, you, they, they don't uh, control the body and soul of Igbo land. You are aware of that. It is, the to some extent, the... They, they dominate the social media to say that I control. They have said many things that did not come to pass. In Anambra, three, four years ago, they said there would be no election. There was an election. I don't want to double inch, I don't want to discuss that. My concern is that the president is welcome to Igbo land. Yeah, yeah no, but, but th this is why we're asking these questions, because um, for successive Mondays, the IPOB has, you know, declared a seat at home. And of course, the people in the southeast mostly have respected that sit at home order. You know, no, for... they did not respect it, sir. Please, please, well, please, please. They well, did not. Well, Mr. Mr. Okuku. Let me intervene here. Yeah, Mr. Okuku. The people don't respect sit at home. What people fear is that their goods will be destroyed. And yeah, they so, so, which, so, 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 Yes, great. You know, when but you whatever. Goods, hold on, Mr. Okuku. You must be careful not eat for it to be destroyed. If you today issue a statement in Lagos that you are going to destroy goods, Markets will not be open, not because the people obey you. Yeah, but whatever reason it, there is for obeying, either out of fear or because they believe in the cause of no, the IPOB. If, if, if you surrender your teeth to an Arab out of fear, you do not voluntarily give your teeth to the Arab out of fear. Great. If I'm armed now, enter your studio, I will rob the whole of you people. You did not give me your teeth out of fear. Yeah. Mr. Okoku, the, the point here is, regardless of what the reason it, is, People have continuously stayed indoors on Mondays in the southeast. I and told you and, that. and I, 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 I'm me. saying Unless this because if I, I enter your house and yes. say, Give me your money, and I'm armed or holding a stick or holding a pen knife, and you give me your money, did you give me your money for long three really? No, I didn't. But, Ms. Alkuku, there's a state government in the southeast. There's state governments in the southeast. Do the state governors... Are you listening to me? I will cut off this interview. I'm not a patient person. No, I, I get, I get your point. I completely get your point, Ucho Kuku. But I'm saying that there still is the state governments in the southeast that have given counter orders. We, we lost Mr. Kuku there. Um, it, it's unfortunate that that interview had to end that way. Um, because that's exactly why we've brought you up on the show. So that you can explain what the situation is in the southeast. It's, it's, I, I find that quite you know, absurd that rather than come out to explain to the people of Nigeria what exactly is going on in the Southeast, he chose to end that interview that way. But um, people of um, the Southeast, that's exactly what it is. He's saying the uh, citizen order um, is not voluntary. He's basically, you know, you heard you know, his points regarding that, but 
We wish that we can get uh, other people from the side of the Ohanese and Igbo to clear things out for us regarding what would happen in Imo State on Thursday and regarding the cracks in the um, Ohanese and Igbo as well as a whole. Yeah, but I think it has been established over time that it's not necessarily voluntary. There are people, and you've said it over and over, that people sit at home not because they necessarily. So, really, it's enjoy. not even about the reason. It's, it, it's regardless the fact that of. They continue to sit at why home. do we have a police? Why do we have law enforcement agencies? If, I mean, that's why they exist. They exist to check crime. They exist to check meet um, disruptions to law and order. So, when disruptions to law and order come up, then the police should swing into action because that's why you were constituted in the first place. Absolutely. And remember, one of the questions that I asked with Yoko this morning is who really has the ears of the people of the Southeast? Because if you say that the IPOB are giving these orders and people are respecting them out of fear, there is a government that should be able to say no. You know, we are the government in the Southeast, not the IPOB. You've called them a min minority, which is fair. But there is a government that should say, we are the government. We are the ones who make the laws in the Southeast. There should be Ohanes and Igbo. Now, he, he mentioned, and you know, that's one thing I've always known, that there are two factions. There's the Ohanes and Igbo that is led by uh, Professor um, um, Obiozo, and then there's also the Ohanes and Igbo worldwide, which he is a uh, deputy president of. So there are different bodies that should have the ears of the people of the Southeast and be able to give them you know, some orders that people should have trust in. And these things, um, over time, people mm -hmm. have said that these things point out Failure of proper leadership of the Southeast, either traditional leadership, uh, social cultural leadership, um, or, or government leadership in the Southeast. And that's the place that these minority IPOB have taken to be able to tell people to sit at home. So, what do you expect? This is why that question is critical. If successive Mondays have happened and people have actually stayed at home, either out of fear, or because they love the IPOB or because they don't feel like working on Monday because they had a stressful Sunday. One of the reason is, what do you think would happen if the same order comes on Thursday? Who then is the uh, other people of the South is going to listen to? Is it the same IPOB that you said that they fear? Or is it the government who says the president is coming so everybody should come out? See, Osarige, you see what just happened now where we're trying to have a conversation. We have no stakes in this matter. We're trying to have a conversation with the um, a stakeholder, the deputy president of the Hanes in the Indigo worldwide. and worldwide. It's a faction yes. Of, uh, and he didn't have the patience, he says he's not a patient man, he didn't have the patience to have a balanced, objective, fair conversation with journalists. Now imagine what the scenario would look like when it comes to speaking with IPOB members. Because I, I ask this because we talk about communication and conversation and dialogue being the answer. We just attempted one and it failed. So we hear from people, governors in the Southeast. We hear from the Obama State Governor, David Uhamahi. We hear from governors saying, oh, what are you, when, when journalists ask them, what are you doing about the IPOB situation? What he said or what they say is that they are conversing, collaborating, working with the IPOB, um, working with Ohane Zendigo to communicate and dialogue with the IPOB to make sure that is resolved. Now, if a representative of the Ohane Zendigo worldwide cannot have a simple phone interview with a TV station to clear this, so you can then imagine what a disaster communication or conversation or dialogue would be mm -hmm with the people, with the stakeholders that are involved. I really don't see any headway really, you know, from such conversations or such gatherings because if it was a fiscal meeting, we can imagine him just walking up and leaving. And oh, that really I'm, doesn't take us forward. Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't, you know, want to, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, describe his personality with that. He probably, he probably had a, has a rough morning and, you know, like I said, he's not a patient person. Okay. Um, but it still doesn't take away, you know, the details of the actual conversation. But it shows the fact that dialogue um, over this issue would seem like a very tough thing yes, to do. Yes, it will, obviously. And, you know, it, it probably is the reason um, things have turned out this way. Because for a long time, for years, there have been these agitations. There have been these, you know, conversations springing up here and there. You know, right from Masob to, you know, Namdekano-led IPOB to, of course, the springing up of ESN here and there, and to, you know, what we have today. They have, there has been enough time from the Ralph Wazirike period, you know, of, um, of Masob to where we are today for them to have an actual conversation. Yes, um, you may not be able to get, um, you know, the restructuring or to get your Biafra immediately, but there has been enough time for conversations. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they haven't tried, because I've, I've spent time in the Southeast, and I know that they've, they have tried. 
um, government has tried, traditional leadership has tried. There are certain personalities, uh, Professor um, uh, Wambwe, Ben, I think it's Ben Wambweze, who's a, um, a constitutional lawyer, professor of constitutional law, has been in the forefront of these conversations with the state governors. Even the morning, the very morning that IPOB was prescribed, there was a meeting at the Enugu State Government House that somehow, somewhere, Namdi Kano didn't show up for that meeting. Um, but I was, I was aware of these things happening here and there. Um, how successful have these conversations been? Obviously not very, very successful. Um, how have they been able to establish themselves as one body working for the same goal? Not very successful. Um, and in what ways has the traditional leadership and the, um, you know, the government leadership in the Southeast been able to establish itself as the main voice of the Southeast? And that includes Ones and Igbo. Mm. Um, there's obviously now two factions. Are they speaking the same voice? And that's the reason I started the conversation with, help, with asking him to identify uh, or to clarify for us, if Professor John Obiozo and the leadership of the current uh, Mohandez Zendibo worldwide are speaking in the same voice, are they speaking the same language? Do they believe in the same things? Are they both, you know, do they have the same um, ideas or views concerning IPOB's agitation? Do they have the same views concerning President Muhammadu Buhari's um, efforts, for, you know, with the Southeast? These are very, very when important. When two different organizations who claim to want the unity of the Southeast are not even unified within themselves. I leave it at that. Oh, well, there's, well even in party congresses, there's factions. I just leave it at that. That happens with politics. But anyway, um, the conversation has been on tomorrow's visit of President Mohamed Abouari to the Southeast, to Imo State, where he's you know, meant to commission some projects. And of course, uh, the state government has put out a message saying he's very, very much welcome. But the IPOB thinks entirely different. And uh, we initially had tried to have a conversation with uh, President, uh, President, uh, Deputy President of Arneze Ndibo worldwide to understand what tomorrow might play out like. Um, does, you know, the points that Uche Okuku made in his press release, do those things really, really um, matter with regards to the views concerning the Southeast? We'll take a short break now. And, um, of course, uh, we will uh, be back right after. Yes. Um Look, we're ending the conversation now, but we're teasing definitely to this. Um, as part of our CSR, we'll be educating you on road signs in Nigeria. Um, so when you drive around um, the city of Lagos, when you drive around the country, do watch out for those road signs and obey them, obey traffic rules and save lives. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining us on The Breakfast this morning. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa. We show very interesting Wednesday ahead. <laughs>